Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is an M46 pattern KR. Now that stands for Korean Republic. And this was the pattern that was in action during the Korean War. It's a tier 8 premium American medium. It's located on the south spawn of Steps Encounter. And it's under the command of Villa Perino. Now I had to contact him to get another copy of this replay because I tried downloading the original one that he actually sent via what replays and for some reason it just would not download. Now, I really wanted to see this battle because uh, the Ripper pattern is a pattern tank that quite a lot of people have actually purchased thinking of course it's like the tier 9 one and the tier 10 pattern that you can actually get in the game but uh, it's uh, still got the 90mm gun which is capable if it will come up. That's it, showing it do 240 alpha, penetrating 243 millimeters of armor with the uh, APCR and 192 with the standard AP. Now you can see that Philip has put them the other way around. He's put the premium rounds in the first slot, the standard rounds in the second slot. And he's also carrying seven rounds of HE just in case he needs it. Reload time 6.38 seconds. Well, what's so good about a 90mm gun on this tank? Well, it's got a fairly fast reload, and that's true of the Patriot as well. If you can get lots of shots into the enemy, you can bring them down, especially if you get one that bounces like that or not penetrating. You can go for the weak spots and get the shell through if you've got enough penetration on the target. He's trying to go for the front of that Tiger too. He's not getting through, but he also is aiming for the Coppola. That time it went through. No problem. 224. And say, if you can't get it through the front plate of the vehicle, go for the Coppola. But it's just a little more difficult to get through. Now, somebody is capping at the other end on the enemy team, but I won't worry about it. It's only one tank, and it takes twice as long to cap out in an encounter as it does a standard battle. Filipperino's moving up on the enemy, and he's the only one in his team who's actually doing that. But he won't be the only one for long. He's definitely trying to get this guy going for the lower plate this time. Nicely done! 222 through the grass where you can actually see the outline. Sometimes you can just whiz the shells straight through the tufts of grass into the enemy. The guy's trying to hide his lower plate. He's showing his upper plate, but... Filipperino gets through that one instead, 229 off that one. Low rolls still. Come on, lower plate. Note that one, I think that hit the rock actually. Oh, he's come out again, he wants a shot on us and he fluffs it. The turret on the ripper pattern is actually quite good. Gets a shot through the side of the IS, I'm not sure that actually hit the Capona. I think it just hit the turret and took him out. He fires one through the main body of the tank and gets that one in. The Tiger 2 mucks up his shot. Black Prince takes around in the engine bay. 244, high roll. He's looking this way, is he? Trying to repossession. That one goes through as well, but he fires one in for 139, so he does get a hit on us. That's another hit and a low roll. 233, he's going to work on this guy now. You can see all the holes in his lower plate. Easy to pen, takes the guy out. Even while that Tiger 2 is still there, but he was preoccupied by the TS-5. The TS-5 is going to tear him apart with a 120mm gun. And he's gone. The Emil actually got him in the end. We've got a Fox, the CS-52 list back near our spawn point. Well, it's actually near the centre of the map. Those have turned out to be quite a good little tank, actually. They're not OP as such, but they are quite decent, the Fox. T28 prototype easily goes through the side of that guy with standard ammo. There's a Stuart Mill over there. He's not looking at us. He's looking at the enemy. And, well, Filipperino tries to put a round through his side, but it didn't go in. He's loading HE. That went in. That must have gone in. It went in right where, the, where he aimed. He's tried again. I think that Stuart Mill is going to be badly damaged now, but he just can't see him. That one didn't hit the target, it exploded in the distance. Of course, the steering mill's got a very nasty gun. That one looks like it hit. So he's taking these blind shots, but he is getting damaged on the enemy. He's been spotted again. 
Mufasa. Oh, it's the Stirring Mill. And yes, he's lost half his hit points. And one of his teammates is asking him to pull back. He's going one last shot. He gets that one into the gun shield. But he's pulling up on this guy. One more. Yes, got him. Nicely done. Didn't want to explode himself, but he has taken a round from the list. He's fired, gone back to standard ammo, and he got that one. He actually, I think he set fire to the guy. Or well, he might have, but it actually was a very, very late shot. But the enemy have got two in the cap now, so we have to move to the cap. There's five left on the enemy team. If they get more in the cap, it could end very quickly with a win for them by capping out. And looks like Filipperino. Oh, Scorpion. And that's the unbranded one. He is spotted. And the Scorpion bounces around off us. And he gets a... Well, that's a high roll, the 359. But he is spotted by somebody off to his left. He's going to go for another shot. And the Scorpion pull back. Yeah, yeah, I think he spotted the M12 on the enemy team. He's going to take that one out. Drops the gun. Yes, gets in through the gun shield. And the M12 is finally taken out by RGW Panther. The enemy is still capping. But he's got to watch out for that Scorpion. There's a Super Hellcat. He's been spotted. He might be on the receiving end of a 128mm round from that uh, Scorpion Kanonan. Puts around into the CS44. Bounces the round that came back. Go for the Super Hellcat. Easily should be able to punish this one. Yes, he does. But he takes around from the Super Hellcat's 90mm. Go for the signs of CS44. Yes, gets it in for another reset. In fact, the guy pulled out of the cap in the end. There's only three enemies remaining. He puts one in. There's the Scorpion. He's a one-shot. Yes! Kills him. One last enemy. The 7032. Who must be over here somewhere. And there he is. He's on the move. First one doesn't pen. He's loading the premium. Goes for the lower plate. It's going for the upper plate now. That one didn't go through at all. It's those double barrels and they're looking both at him. So he's aiming for the top of the turret for the Capola. Wasn't loaded in time. This time he's going to go for him. He's going to try and immobilize him. But he's going for the ram. And he gets it. Wins the game with a ram. I'm so pleased that we managed to get this replay after all. That was a great battle. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for Filipperino in the M46 Patton KR, the Korean Republic one, the premium one. He managed to get a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle, a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got five, one short of getting a top gun, and a shell proof for blocking more damage than hit points for his own vehicle. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, and the hand of God for surviving the battle, having received damage from four different enemy tanks, as well as a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get six. He also managed to get a couple of battle hero medals. He got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And just look at that. Win eight. 26,130. I've never seen a more active M46 Patton KR. Filipperino handled it like an expert, well, as you'd expect. And he was just roaming around the battlefield taking out the enemy. But he was just so confident in the way he did it as well. What a fantastic game from Filipperino. In fact, you have to scroll the page in order to see all the players that he hit in that game. And you can see why he got a confederate. Let's have a look at team score. 5,982 hit points of damage from that game. Easily the high caliber. He carried his team on that one. Just shy of 6k damage. And 3,368 went to the TS5 on his team. And the next high score after that was the CS52 list with 2,626 hit points. When it came to kills, again, he's got the highest number. One third of the enemy team were killed by Filipperino. Three kills were made by the Emil 2. And then there's three players on his team managed to get two kills. The TS5, the GW Panther and the Stur Emil. And only two members of the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. And they were the IKB90B and the 7032. When it came to base XP, of course it's Filipperino right at the top of the table. He's got the top in all three columns. 1,816 base, which is a very high ace tanker for this tank. 1,107 for the TS-5, 702 for the ISM. 
He fired 44 rounds in this game, got 34 direct hits, 25 penetrations, 4 splash. Damage of 5,982 hit points, of which 1,781 were at more than 300 meters. He received 9 hits during that game, 4 of them penetrated, 5 non-penetrations, and no hits by splash damage. So everything that was fired back at him was standard AP rounds or APCR. He blocked damage of 1,900 hit points in total. That's a huge amount. Normally, when people play the M46, they end up getting penetrated by most of those rounds and they're out of the game very quickly. But in this game, it was the other way around. He was dealing the damage to the enemy. Six enemy vehicles spotted, 12 enemy vehicles damaged. So there was only three enemy tanks he didn't touch during that game. And he killed five of them. And 866 hit points of damage assistance or spotting assist in this game. He also got 47 defense points for resetting the cap and on a premium count he earned 174,281 credits but he did fire a lot of premium rounds a lot of APCR and I'm afraid that meant that his profit instead was only 45,021 credits but if he'd been on the standard account he would have made a loss for sure. He earned 2,724 experience points for the battle and 272 for this being a premium vehicle and took away 2,996 experience points altogether. So the Ripper pattern. Well, it's actually quite a decent tank in the right hands, but most people who play it don't know how to handle it. They don't realize that it's the turret that's strong, not the shell and the hull. If you actually expose the hull, and most people who play it do expose the hull, they get penetrated and they get taken out of the game fairly quickly. But so long as you actually conceal your hull using the ridge lines or using uh, the scenery, then you can actually um, really pump enemy ra um, 90 millimeter rounds into the enemy. That's the 90 millimeter gun, the same gun on the Patriot. It's actually very effective at taking down enemy tanks. So it's an interesting tank and it's well worth considering along with the T26E5 Patriot uh, because both of them are effectively game winning tanks. And of course, as you saw in this, he actually did manage, manage to get a huge amount of credits for that battle, uh, for all the damage he was doing. So many rounds he fired, 44 rounds, 34 direct hits. You can see where this thing manufactures the credits. It prints them off like nobody's business. But in order to get the damage, he has to use premium rounds and that's why the premium rounds are so expensive. So yes, it does generate credits, but if you want to be as good as Filipperino, you have to play like him and you have to pump out those premium rounds to get the penetrations and then you can dominate the battlefield. So if you enjoyed that replay, and thank you very much for Filipperino for sending it in twice, <laughs> uh, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thank you for watching.